Hello, beautiful people. Welcome to episode number four of Fred and Sir's Questions. And this week, it's an amalgam of question about SSH issues. So I often get questions about people that are not able to connect to their droplets anymore. So this week episode is about how can you connect to your droplet while having SSH issue. Let's deep dive in. So when you create a droplet, you have the opportunity to do two things to be able to connect to that droplet. Either use a one-time password, which is the less secure approach. The second one is to use SSH key to be able to connect to your droplet. Right now, there is no way for you anymore to create a droplet without selecting at least one SSH key. And with that SSH key, you're going to be able to connect your droplet using SSH. There's different issues that you can have with that. First, you may have changed your SSH key on your computer or your SSH key that was part of the digital ocean panel was hold SSH key of one of your coworker and it's not working for you anymore. So instead of panicking, there's a way for you to connect your droplets and I'm going to show you how. So I have my droplet here. What I'm going to try to do is try to connect to my droplets. I'm going to go in my uh, terminal, SSH. Root is the main username when you create the droplet. You should change it after instead of using root to connect. But right now I have a permission denied because the actual key that I use, the SSH key that I use usually is not within my droplet. So for the sake of that demo, I deleted the key from the droplet. So I was able to connect before, but I'm not able to connect anymore. So the first thing I will need to check, do I still have a SSH key? And in my case, let's assume that I don't have any SSH key. So what I will do, I will generate a new one. So I can use SSH dash key gen, which can help me to generate a new public and private RSA key. Um, so right now I need to decide where it's going to go. You can choose the default file. In my case, I want to overwrite and I'm going to choose my passphrase. And now if I go and I do cat, uh, my user, my home user, the SSH, and I do rdsu.pub, you're going to see that now I have my SSH key. So now, I can still try to connect to my droplet, but that's not going to work obviously because I just created a new SSH key. So the thing I want to check is that if I go in my dashboard, there's a security option under the account category. I have the security tab where there's SSH keys. So this is the fingerprint of my previous SSH key that I was using. I need to add my SSH key to my dashboard. So here you have some details instruction about how to do that. In my case, I already created again my new key. So what I want to do, I can also just be a little bit lazy here and copy that comment. So uh, again, it's what I did before. That's, I need to copy that text, paste it here. So I'm copying the public SSH key and I paste it here. I'm going to give it a name, demo SSH. And now I added my SSH key to my digital ocean account that will give me the opportunity when I create a new droplet, I will be able to use that SSH key. So if I go to droplet and I create a new one and I call it, uh, let's not change. Let's just change. Maybe take something smaller. I don't need something big and oops, I go here and I do new SSH key. And uh, I need to select my key here, demo SSH. I'm going to create the droplet. And because now uh, the SSH key that is in my account will be had to my new droplet, I'm going to be able to connect to that new droplet. I'm going to take the IP of my new droplet here. So if I go in my console and I do SSH root at the IP of my droplet, now it's going to ask me if I want to add that IP address to the list of known hosts. So I need to type my Pi's phrase and that's going to be added. So now I can connect to my new droplet. But again, that is not the goal of that DMO. So I still don't have access to that droplet. So first thing I can do, I need to go here and I will go to access. And here I can connect to my droplet using the console access. 
And this is where the magic happened. This is where you're going to be able to access your droplet, even if your SSH key is not working. So it's kind of a fallback we're giving you. Or if you're not using the terminal, you can also use the console for any other action you want to take on your droplet. So first thing I need to do, I need to reset my root password. That will reset the password and I will receive an email with that password. So if I go check my business email, I have the email here with my new password. So now I'm going to go back to the dashboard and I'm going to launch the console. They're going to ask me for the login. So my username is root. I will ask me for my password. So the password that I got from the email, but the first thing I need to do is to update that password. So I need to paste the password again, and now I need to enter a new one. So let's take new one. You need to retype it to be sure that both will be the same. Now that I'm connected to my droplet, because I want to minimize the usage of the console, uh, you know, it's a little bit tricky right now to use the console. We're working on a new version, but what I want to ensure is that I'm going to be able to connect to my droplet from any other computer using the password. So I know I told you at the beginning, it's not the most secure way to connect to the droplet, but now it's just temporary. So I can get access to it and change my SSH configuration easily on the droplet. So if I use my editor VI on etc SSH, and there is sshd underscore config file where it's the configuration file of, of the SSH daemon. So if I scroll down a little bit, on some point, I'm going to find a configuration that is called password authentication. Now, as you can see, the option is set to no. So I need to set it to yes. Let's close this. Let's save the file. Now what I need to do is to restart SSHD because that file is only read when that daemon is starting. So if I do systemctl, restart SSHD, boom, that should be restarted. If I go in my console and I do SSH again, that will ask me for my password. So if I type my password, now I'm connected to my droplet. Congratulations. The hardest part was that one. But now what I don't want to do, I don't want to be able to connect using the password because as I told you, it's not the most secure way of doing things. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to exit this for now and I'm going to cat again my SSH key so I can copy the content and had it on my droplet. So now I'm going to be able to connect with SSH. So rc.pub. Now it's a content. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to connect again to my droplet. And now I need to add my SSH key to the ohm.ssh slash authorize key. If I go there, I paste my content. I save this. So what I want to do now, I want to undo the password authentication. So I want to set it to no again. So if I do VI, ADC, SSH, and uh, SSHD config file, I go back here. I'm going to update yes to no. I'm saving my file. I restart again the SSHD, so SSHD mount, systemctl. Restart SSHD. Now that I've been restarted, if I exit, let me try this again. So I'm going to try to connect to my droplet again. And now it is working without asking my password. I can exit that and I can close my console. I can also disconnect from here, close the screen. And now I am good. So I can now have access to my droplet using any terminal, using my SSH key, no password anymore. And now I can do whatever I want to do with my droplet. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching that episode. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss future FAQ and please add your comment below. Also, don't forget to send your question using the form below. In the meantime, Check our YouTube channels because there is a lot of great content. So on that note, see you next week.